it's, it gives you a tremendous feeling of satisfaction to produce something yourself, even if it's a black and white pencil sketch or, of course, uh, a full coloured oil painting or watercolour painting. So what do you need to kick off with? Well, you can go as, uh, as little, if you like, as... Well, uh, in fact, there was... Um, Constable had uh, some sketchbooks. I think there was something in the region of about two inches by three inches, that's all, and a pencil. So if you like, you can start on something that size, two by three with a pencil. That's all you need. Uh, naturally, you need to be outside to be able to sit down and relax. And incidentally, for the nervous, they can get behind a tree with a sketchbook that size mm -hmm. and sketch away. Nobody sees them. They can hide. But that's, that's the, the sort of small beginnings. And then, of course, you build up and you work uh, perhaps with watercolour, then with oil paint or acrylic paint, and gradually work until your confidence builds up. When your confidence builds up, then you're, it's great, because you don't mind taking everything I've got here and sort of setting up a mini studio outside. I was going to say, it's funny you should say hi behind a tree, because I'm sure a lot of people feel terribly sensitive about others coming and standing behind them, you know, as they're painting away. Oh, absolutely. I certainly would. Yeah, well, didn't we all? I think we all did it first. I mean, I did. I, I, I started in Hastings, at, at Hastings Art School, and I, was, I used to hide behind a boat uh, on the beach when I was painting. We, we all are afraid, but I think there's one thing that we should always remember, especially the beginner, the beginner when he's painting, is that there's no... When people look at you and assume you get a crowd around them, they're, they're fascinated. They're not thinking, oh, is that all you can paint? I don't like it. They're thinking, I wish I could do it. But they won't. They're afraid to do it. You need this bridge to be gapped, uh, gap to be bridged, whichever way round we'll start again. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, need, you need to be able to feel that, that you can paint. And uh, people looking do believe that you are painting. Therefore, you've got, if you like, you've got confidence via other people. Yeah. So just carry on and work, and they're thinking how great it is. Now, when you look at something, uh, Alwyn, you know, if, you look at a, if you're in a train and you look out a window, do you look for some particular focal point? For example, if we look out th this particular window here, say, across at the tree there, yeah. um, I mean, all sorts of things come crowding in. I mean, and, and the thought of reproducing them all would be breathtaking. I mean, do you, do you try and look for some kind of perspective? Do you try and pick certain things out and accentuate them? Yes, you do. Um, but we must remember that, really, you paint what you want to paint. Uh, I mean, for instance, if, if we take the view that we're talking about outside, if you like that traffic sign, for instance, um, if you wanted to paint that, paint it. Paint the trees at the side of it. It doesn't matter. If you're, if you're going to paint, you're going to paint for enjoyment. And if you're enjoying it, then you're going to paint what you want to paint. You, you're not going to paint something that, that doesn't inspire you. So paint what you want to paint. There are rules, of course, but when you think of it, a lot of rules are broken today. You can, it, it's you that, that, that has to enjoy. Yeah. You paint what you want. And, and not worry about reproducing uh, photographic detail by any means. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you, no. Paint, uh, you, you, if you're painting in a representational style, in other words, you're painting something that is going to represent a tree, tree's going to look like a tree, water is going to look like water, fine. But don't go too detailed. Don't, don't try to paint a photograph, or, of course, you may as well take a photograph. Absolutely. OK, let's go through the mechanics of it now. How yeah. do you actually begin, physically? Uh, well, let us assume that we're starting with a sketch and you're going to do a sketch outside in pencil. So you make a sketch of the thing that you've seen that you want to right. get down on, on um, of paper. I mean, take this sketch, for instance. Um, this sketch was, was, was done. It's uh, done with a 2B pencil, nothing mysterious about that. You can buy them in any shop. And away, uh, the, the drawing is done. And from that point, incidentally, what you do do when you're outside, you mustn't forget that when you go back to work from this sketch, your subject has disappeared. As soon as you get in the car or whatever and get back home, the subject has gone. So you must put on your sketch while you're outside everything that you need to remember. I mean, up here I've got the sun. Sure, um, sure. That's is the way you I just, put it on. I've, just, in I've just scribbled in the sun because. And, and I noticed down here, although I don't think the viewer will pick it out among all, you, you've written water. There are that's right, because on we've the ground got there. puddles of water, that's right. And of course, we've got the tree. Now, in this one, I didn't need to put a lot of detail uh, because to me, it's a simple format of a landscape. It's a, it's a happy landscape, it's, some, it's something nice and happy. Um, but this is the way one would start, and I would suggest that anybody starting outside writes in as much as they can information. This is not going to be a painting, this isn't going to be a drawing in its own right, although it could be, so don't worry about spoiling it. 
Okay. Just write and scribble on it. So from there, we go on to the next step. And incidentally, although you've done these on separate pieces of paper and canvas, that's yeah. only for the, the programme. You that, would normally exactly, stay on the same one, one, one step. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, this is the next, the next stage here. What have you done here? Yeah. Well, on this, I've started... Incidentally, I'm painting in acrylic. In, in acrylic paint and uh, I've started that's why it's on canvas I've started at the top and worked down on the sky now the sky is to me the most important part of any painting uh, landscape painting that is of course because it gives you the the atmosphere it gives you the feeling I mean we look out here today and and the Sun is around somewhere and you know what type of day it is if it's raining it's raining it's cold windy and so on it sets the mood yeah. and the mood is the most important part if, if you paint a, a good sky then you'll paint a masterpiece. So rule number but one, get your sky right. Get your sky absolutely yeah. right and then go in from there. OK, yeah. now the next step we have here, we're moving presumably toward the, the foreground a little more now. That's right, we? yes. Well, we've brought in the middle distance. You can yeah. see the middle distance here with these yeah. trees. Yeah. Never, ever paint too much work in the middle distance before you come to the foreground. If Why you is do, that? Because you've done too much detail in the background right. and, you're, and you're really, then you've got to get, have even more detail in the beginning. That's the right, you're in trouble. Uh, because you're going to finish up with a photographic drawing of a tree or a painting of a tree to make those drop back into the picture. Yeah. So you must, must keep the detail away from there and then bring it in as you come forward. In fact, see what has happened really, we're working from the sky, which is the furthest part away. Right, right. We're coming to the middle distance, which yeah, is the yes, light of yes. the trees. And now we're coming to the foreground. Right, doesn't it look awful up to you? Well, yes. Oh, it looks, it looks like all the dead elms I passed on the way up. But we're getting yeah. toward the end of it now here. Oh yes, we? oh yes. So really, that's a stage. It's not. A, it's only a mechanical stage. Yeah. I mean, one doesn't wait for an hour to come back to this. You just yeah. sort of carry on ad lib. But you've Absolutely. got to break it somewhere for the camera. Right. And this is. And here we are now putting in the the final embellishments. Yeah, I noticed you did a good one down there. Yes, when I, you I started, thought, didn't you? That, that, yes. That was the best yeah. Part yeah of well, the, I think that, that's just about part, made it. Actually, that. Yes, it is. I think yes. that, that yes, I'll keep it that bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but that's smashing, and, and, you, and what, we, what you're doing now is really gingering it up and giving yeah, it that, bring, that, that extra yes, feeling. Yes, and you've got to bring in the light. And, and, and what I dark. would like, if I just may, uh, uh, Alwyn, just show the viewers the kind of thing that you can do. I mean, uh, we did that rather simply for, for their point of view, but this is something that you painted. I mean, a smashing picture there. It's really super, and you really can work on that. Or, as you suggested earlier, that it might be a good idea to start with watercolours. And we just yeah. look very briefly at, uh, at one of the watercolours that you, you did in the past yeah. to give uh, the kind of feeling that uh, the people need. Yes, well, one thing about watercolours, it's simple. It, uh, sorry, good. not simple to do. Don't misunderstand me. It's it's simple to carry around and to take and out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everything. But, but the most important thing to have, yeah. as well as enthusiasm, is clearly stickability. Stickability. Stick, stick to it. Yeah, absolutely. Alan Croshaw, yeah. sure. thank you very much. Thank you. Mind you, not many of us have time these days for the pleasure and peace of landscape painting. And certainly from the sacks of mail that have been arriving, it looks as if a lot of you have been using your spare time to write to us, particularly the thousands of you interested in Rita Greer's special food and diet information. Now, so many have written in, she's had to employ extra helpers just to open all your letters. So please be patient. If you're waiting for a reply, you will get one eventually. But now let's meet a group of people who cause quite a stir wherever they go. They're called the Fly... I've only performed this trick on television. Wait a minute, Dimitri, what is this trick you're going to be doing? Don't worry, they're going to love it. It better be good. It's going to be great. Remember, this is a family crowd. Right. Uh, Want to give me a drum roll? Drum roll, right. sure. I'll give you a mic roll. Thank you. Right, here we go. Hup. That's it. Shh. Dimitri, what are you doing? Quiet. That's a left hand over the top trick. You cut it out. Half the audience could do this trick. Dimitri, everybody's left handed. Look, why don't we do something a little bit more complicated? Well, we've had no practice and the people here could care less. Well, we could play the question game as in Tom Stoppard's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, copyright 1965. Won't he sue? What's the matter, you chicken? Well, what good will it do? Practice. Statement, one love. Cheating. How? I hadn't started yet. Statement. Two love. Are you counting that? What? Are you counting that? Now, no repetitions. Three love. I'm not going to me. play if you're going to be like that. Who served? Huh? Now, no grunts. Uh, one love. Um, who's go? Why? Why not? What for? Foul, no synonyms. One all. Oh, what in God's name is going on? Foul, no rhetoric. Two one. What does this all add up to? Can't you guess? Were you addressing me? <laughs> is there anyone else? Who? How should I know? Well, why do you ask? Are you serious? Was that rhetoric? No. Statement to oh. <laughs> What's the matter with you today? When? What? Are you deaf? Am I dead? Yes or no? Is there a choice? Is there a god? Foul, Ooh. one on sequiturs, three, two, one game all. Mm. Uh, see. What's your name? What's yours? I asked you first. Statement, one love. What's your name when you're at home? What's yours? When I'm at home? Is it different when you're at home? What home? Haven't you got one? Why do you ask? What are you driving at? What's your name? Repetition, two love, match point to me. Who do you think you are? Rhetoric, game, and match.
Go. Well done, well done. Oh, Do you oh, think you're you. going to be able to speak after uh, after all that effort? Oh, of course. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Every word a gem. Every word a gem. <laughs> Thank now, you. now, who's who? Dimitri. No, but I, 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 I thought one of you was really. I thought you were really Irish Americans in disguise. Oh, of course. But now, actually, I'm Ivan Karamazov, who was just playing the role of Rosencrantz. This is Dimitri, who was being Guildenstern, but isn't any longer. And thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lucky for us all. My congratulations are very heartfelt because, you see, I noticed that you're actually able to juggle with three balls now. And yes, I, which I are quite this difficult, was... really. Yes, yes. Well, yes. What happens is that with uh, things like balls, when they drop, they roll away, unlike the easier stuff that we normally juggle, which includes sickles, hatches, meat cleavers, bottles of champagne, torches, and so forth. Just hang on a minute. Could I just grab hold of one of those? Oh, yes. certainly. There you go. Hang on, gonna... Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, there you go, just rolling uh, away, very, very hard. Gravity. You have gravity. You cheat. This, this thing doesn't, this doesn't bounce. Well, it doesn't right. roll away. Well, it's the surface that's involved. <laughs> right. It's the mud. <laughs> right, there Little you are. brimming of mud. <laughs> but is, have you got some great, amazing concept about the art of, of juggling? What is it that you are trying to do to juggling, apart from ruining well, it? Well, we're trying to, <laughs> other than ruin it, we're trying to uh, publicize it as an art form. We believe that its, uh, its potentials far out, out uh, fly those things that have normally been done with it so far. That's, That's easy, easy for me to say, say yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Would you like to have another try? We're, we're, we're sort of at the borders of juggling. We're sort of trying to push out all the frontiers of it so to um, change people's ideas about what it is. Most people think it's just a circus art, and what we think it is is it's really art with an E, you know, at the end. Two E's. It's a bit easy for you to say. <laughs> Too easy, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> you obviously have a lot of fun with this, but I, you do, you did mention a few moments ago that you use certain other objects apart from the balls that can perhaps be rather dangerous. And I gather that it's not just the two brothers, but you've, you've no, augmented of the family not. We have a bit to have because extras, of this danger. Right. Mm. Yes, uh, here in fact they are, Smerdyakov and Fyodor, two of our many brothers. Hi, hi. Hi there, and and you're bringing on some more objects that you're about to juggle with. Let me take the the balls off okay, you for good a moment luck. because you're you're going to bring a touch of American syncopation into yes, this. Yes, that's piece, true. Aren't you? Play a little bit of, of uh, music in five four. We'll uh, demonstrate that presently. Excuse me while I extract my whistle here. And that is and that is part I'm of the act. Wedding my whistle, yes. Right. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to get out of the way. Humor. Yes, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yep. And uh, yep. practice. Good yep. luck. <laughs> Keep practicing. Uh, How do they say on this show? Juggling is a series of events, throws and catches, happening in respect to time. Music, similarly, is a series of events, notes as grafted against a continuum of time. Now this relationship between time and events in music is called rhythm. That same term, rhythm, can also be applied to the same relationship in juggling. So, as we've seen, juggling is rhythm, and music is rhythm. Now, logic tells us that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Therefore, juggling is music. Yay! You see, I didn't go to college for nothing. It cost me thousands of dollars. And now, to further demonstrate this truth, we'd like to perform for you our percussion quartet for juggling ensemble. The time signature is 5-4. Here's a bit of rhythm so natural, it's condoned by the Pope. Gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five.
take it. I've got rhythm. Make it look so easy. The Flying Brothers, Karen Matsoff, currently appearing at the Mayfair Theatre in London. Well, let's see what we have on tomorrow's program. We'll be back, of course, at the usual time, one o'clock. And uh, among our guests, we have uh, singer and songwriter Neil Sedaka and Britain's World Ice Dance Champions Jane Torval and Christine. Let me leave you with the Frank Jennings Consortium. <laughs>